Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Friday Live. Ashley here, of course, um, and I'm super excited to be here with you again from Powtex and Ashley Hay Art Academy Online. So welcome, and um, today I'm going to be telling you about the difference between Powtex Stone Art and Easy 3D Flex. So they are both absolutely wonderful products. I love using them in my own artwork and they are just such a great product to have in your stash ready to play with mixed media. So if you're loving um, mixed media and creating texture in your own artwork, then you definitely want to hang out and have a look at these incredible products from Powtex and the difference between the two. So last week I was showing how to use Easy 3D Flex with stencils and how to turn it into an air dried clay. And I had one of the comments was, so what's the difference between Easy 3D Flex and Stone Art? So I thought I'd take this opportunity today to actually answer that question and really dive deep into, into the difference. So let's take a look. So basically, we'll start with the similarities. So the similarities are basically that they're both a refined powder that you can mix with the Powtex Ultimate Medium and they both do beautiful textural effects for your artwork. So if you are here, it would be fabulous if you pop in and say hello. Um, I know that um, all my regulars will probably be here, so welcome everyone. All right, let's take a look at the art table and go down there and we'll have a start to have a look at what the difference is between um, these two products. So like I say, they both basically make an air dried clay when mixed with Powtex. So you've got stone art and you've got easy 3D flex. And they are both terrific, terrific mediums to use with mixed media. So let me just show you the difference and you can have a look. So we've got, this is the stone art. And so you can see it's quite a sort of coarse um, product and so it's, um, there we go. You can probably see it better out there. Um, so it is basically a paper pulp. It is quite coarse. It is beautiful when mixed with the um, Powtex. And there's all sorts of things that you can do with it. Whereas the Easy 3D Flex is a lot finer. So you can see there the difference in how that looks. So it's a lot finer powder um, than the stone art. And then if we pop that out, you can see it's finer and it's also whiter. So looking at the two, um, similarities is they're both uh, a <laughs> powder and you actually mix them with your Powtex uh, ultimate medium to turn them into a really gorgeous texture. So what can you do with them? So the stone art basically will behave like a regular clay. Um, it is a refined paper pulp, like I said, and it basically is fabulous for making coils and slabs and also building form. It's also the clay that you would use if you're using any press moulds. So you would use stone art with your press moulds to create uh, forms to pop straight onto your artwork. So um, that one is really nice to use for that. This one is the Easy 3D Flex, like I say, is finer and it makes a more stretchy clay, which makes it absolutely fabulous to use with stamps 
and um, stencils like I showed you last week. So if you missed that broadcast last week, be sure to go back and check it out uh, so that you can see how to use the beautiful 3D Flex. I also showed you last week how you can actually mix that one into a clay. All right, so we'll take a look here. Now we've got our 3D Flex here. Oh, 3D Flex, our stone art. So this is your regular stone art clay. So like you see, I'll just move this out of the way. Like you see, you, it is a more regular clay. It, anything that you can basically do with a regular clay, you can do with the stone art. So you can form it, you can do all sorts of um, interesting things with it. So that is a stone art. And like I say, if I wanted to do a press mould, I would basically use that stone art clay in my press mould. So the wonderful thing with stone art, so this is this clay. Let me just show you before I do move on, the difference between the two clays. I'm getting powder on, <laughs> on this. Um, so I have wrapped the Easy 3D Flex I've made it up earlier like I made it up last week. And for those of you who were here last week, you would know that the 3D Flex basically needs to be used within a couple of hours. So you need to ensure that, you know, once you've mixed it up that you're actually using that. So just let me soften it a little bit so the heat of my hands will actually do that. And then see how the 3D Flex clay is more stringy and elastic. So that is one of the major differences. It's at this point that I've made it to, it's not sticky, um, but I wouldn't use it in a press mold because it is so elastic. So it's just going to lose its form when you pop it out. All right, so that physically is the difference. And we can take a look now at what you can do with it so that you understand uh, the possibilities here of these two incredible mediums. So like I've already touched on, I've got um, some of my stone art powder on there, but um, all I would do is just work that back through. And when you are mixing your clays, you just want to make sure that you can't see any of those powders left. Um, in there. So in short, if you do have any questions, be sure to ask. Uh, lovely to see Donna from Canada. Welcome. Um, and uh, if you've got any questions, like I say, just be sure to ask them as we go. All right. So let's take a look at what we can do with the stone art. So with the stone art, I'll move these powders out of the way. Uh, with the stone art, you can coil it to make a regular uh, clay. And this is just a chain that I've actually made with the stone art clay and I've put some pigments on it. So whatever you can do with clay, pretty much you can do with the stone art. Uh, the possibilities are endless and it just offers so much flexibility. One of the things I love with the stone art clay is actually rolling it out to a paper, paper thin um, thickness so that you can then actually add those pieces onto your artwork as a dimension. So that is really, really, really superb to do that. So both of those, and of course you can colour it up any way that you like. Uh, this one has been done with the red power colour. This one has been done with the mocha, yellow ochre and red oxide uh, power colours. So you can colour up that clay beautifully and then roll it out further and get these amazing cracked effects. So um, the other way that you can use the stone art clay, and let's just have, <laughs> let's just have a look at um, this one. So... 
this shows you an example of how this clay looks when it's actually added onto, onto a piece. So it can be really spectacular in terms of what you do with it. The other thing that you can do with your stone art clay is you can put it directly onto a canvas. So you can actually put your Powtex down onto the canvas and then sprinkle your stone art onto the Powtex and it actually makes an air dried clay on the surface and you just keep building the textures and things up so that you get a gorgeous, gorgeous uh, finish. So this one shows you a little bit more with a bit of colouring, um, a bit of uh, bista and some dry brushing back into it. But of course, it's not finished. It's just a little sample that I did. But, you know, you can see how, um, you know, wonderful uh, some of those textures are. So it, Donna's just saying, wow, it, what an amazing effect. And uh, yeah, absolutely, the possibilities are endless with the stone art. The other great thing with the stone art, of course, is that you can get an incredible, uh, so you can get this incredible stone effect in your artwork. So if you can see that, that actually really looks like stone. And this is done in layers with the stone art clay and it is just beautiful, the possibilities of what you can do. So that's a little bit of an intro to the stone art and what is possible with that. And then if we look at the difference between, um, <laughs> some banging around here. So if we have a look at the difference between the stone art and actually the 3D flex, what we will see is, um, that the 3D flex is really, really amazing for creating more organic texture. So it is just absolutely stunning for doing this. And I'll show you an example. I'll just pop it up here. Um, the light's a little bit low on my table today, but hopefully you can see that. So with the um, 3D flex, you can see this um, part here is actually done with the 3D flex before it's mixed into a clay, so it's a more stringy mix. The really fabulous thing with the Easy 3D flex is that you can get this, these incredible textures. So you've got versatility with the powder, so you can add as much powder or as little powder as you want, making a runny mix or a stringy mix or turning it right into a clay. So I'll just take you further up this piece here and you can see here this is actually um, the 3D flex turned into a clay and it is stamped into with some shells. So the effects that you can get with both of these mediums are totally different and the 3D flex like I say tends to be more organic and you can get these incredible organic layered textures. The other thing that is wonderful with the 3D Flex is that when you put water or Bista onto it, it actually does some amazing cracked effects as well. So it is absolutely gorgeous to use. And both of these are two of my favourite mediums <laughs> to use with the Powtex. So they are just absolutely gorgeous. And... Um, So have I covered everything? Um, both fabulous to use and I hope that you've started to get a sense of the difference between these two incredible mediums and really it's just a case of experimenting with them, having a play around and really seeing what you can do with um, both of these because they are just gorgeous. So if you've got them in your stash, Make sure you pull them out, try them with different 
um, colours in your Powtex range. Mix them up with some of the other products like the um, Easy Structure and the Sand for incredible different effects. And the more you experiment and play, the more fun you'll have, but also the more discoveries you'll make in terms of what is actually possible. So I hope I've inspired you today to try a few different things with the stone art clay and the 3D flex. And I hope that that has actually answered some of your questions regarding, um, you know, the difference between the two mediums. So, um, yeah, Donna's just saying that thanks, that's very helpful because she gets confused between the two of them. So I think the main thing is to remember that, um, you know, the stone art clay is more like a regular clay. It's going to behave more in terms of um, a regular clay. And then your 3D flex is that really stringy, stretchy, elastic, beautiful, you know, playful, fun um, medium that you can really do very organic effects with. So if you're wanting to create a specific form, you're better to use your stone art um, to mould and, and uh, make form. And then if you are looking for gorgeous, incredible textural effects on your sculptures or on your two-dimensional artwork, then 3D Flex is absolutely brilliant to play with. So there you go. Donna Salt is also saying, yes, she gets confused as well. So girls, I hope that clarifies it for you. Um, and Donna's just saying, so the stone art doesn't crack. That is correct, Donna. So essentially the regular stone art clay is going to behave like a regular clay, whereas the 3D flex clay is going to be more stretchy and you can distress it with cracking. If you don't want the 3D flex to crack, you can actually put some of the 3D sand from Powtex into it, which is a very marble-like sand. It's not like a regular sand. It is absolutely gorgeous to use with the Powtex. Dries super fast. So if you're like me and you're into creating layers and you want to keep working and not stop, then the 3D sand is excellent to um, use with the Powtex, but also uh, to mix in with some of your other products and have a play and try different things. Now, um, just before we do go, I would like to um, just have a chat about what I announced in the um, Powtex Australia Creative Hub the other day. Uh, there is a new upcycling challenge. So I thought over the next few weeks, what I would look at is some ideas for upcycling art projects. So next week we might start, I'm not sure what entirely we'll start with, but I'll be looking at some things that you can do with bottles and maybe frames um, and just really simple upcycling projects that you can have a play around with. And the more the merrier. It would be really fabulous if you guys can, um, you know, come on board with this and really have a play with the upcycling over the next couple of months. So what can you do in your artwork where, you know, you're taking regular things that people discard and turn it in, into artwork? So possibilities are endless with Powtex because, of course, the Powtex will adhere to anything um, so long as it's not plastic. But if it's plastic, the fix is just to put some masking tape onto it. So um, loads and loads and loads of possibilities. So next week, I'll talk to you about some upcycling ideas and I'll show you some of those. And I would love it if you all hop on board with us. Come on board for the challenge. It is um, basically for the... Um, you know, for the most likes, comments and shares in terms of, um, you know, who will get the prize at the end. But it's not just about the prize, it's about participation. It's really about connecting, sharing and um, really doing something together over the next couple of months. So that challenge will finish on the 31st of July. So you've got plenty of time and there is a fabulous prize. I've just launched 
my new online rust effects workshop and so I thought well that's the perfect thing to offer um, people as a bit of an incentive to hop on board and um, join us so uh, the person who um, does the most work and gets the most comments and things uh, will be the person that actually gets that um, workshop for free so join us and it's going to be a lot of fun i will make sure that the link to the rust effects workshop is in the comments so that if you want to have a look at more details around that you can and then of course to learn more about powertex there's lots and lots of free resources on the Powertex website so you can go there and if you want to check out my new Ashley Hay Art Academy you can go there and check uh, that out too. So be sure to join us every week. I pop on with some different ideas and it is wonderful as always to see you guys and I am really looking forward to seeing what you guys do this week and um, let's go with some upcycling and maybe using stone art or 3d flex in those upcycling projects and donna's just saying oh excellent a new tutorial about rust effects um awesome so it is for faux rust effects donna so basically i show you how to get gorgeous rusty colors um, without using the rusty powder if you are keen to learn about the rusty powder and how to use that the video that I've got um, on the website and on YouTube, uh, how to use rusty powder is actually very comprehensive and that is free. So you will be able to access that anytime you like. So go and find it now. And I look forward to seeing some artwork with rusty powder from you. And um, hopefully everyone, I will see you all online soon. Um, I'm super excited uh, to be, you know, um, just seeing what you all do and I look forward to, uh, we'll just, <laughs> and I look forward to actually um, seeing what everyone makes and make sure you post what's on your art table this weekend. And you're very welcome, Donna, and I'm glad we've got two Donnas on today, so it's a bit confusing, but that's okay. Um, I'm very glad that you have both enjoyed it. So until next time, guys, next week for upcycling projects, uh, let us go. So um, until then, ciao for now. And remember, if you have got any questions, be sure to connect um, by Messenger or in the group with me. Ciao.